The awareness and use of NAD has grown wildly over the last few years. Some people seem to benefit from it almost immediately, while other people are taking it and don't really see a difference. What is NAD? Why does it seem to have such a range of impact on different people? And how do you maximize the NAD that you might be taking or thinking about taking to make sure you're getting the most out of the time and money that you're spending on your longevity program? That's what we're gonna talk about in today's video. In order for your cells to function, they require fuel. You need to bring fuel into your body. You need to bring oxygen into your body. And if we drive enough of the right ingredients, we create energy from those ingredients inside of our mitochondria, and that provides the energy necessary for cells to function and do their job. The mitochondria is essentially the engine of the cell. Let's talk about a car for a moment. A car with a normal combustion engine that runs on gasoline, that gasoline was once crude oil. You can't take crude oil out of the ground, put it in your gas tank, and expect your car to run. It doesn't work like that. So you take crude oil, you refine it, into a different product called gasoline. And gasoline is reactive enough when combined with oxygen to help create power. Similarly, we can't directly use the food we eat for fuel. We have to process it and refine it. So we eat certain foods that are filled with energy dense molecules, primarily carbohydrates and fat are the fuels that we could utilize. So we eat foods that are made out of carbohydrates and fat. We refine them inside of our body and through a number of steps inside of the cell and inside of the mitochondria, we create a byproduct of that refinery that our cells can actually utilize or create reactions of metabolism, which allows us to build and create the energy that we need. Almost all of the food that we eat that is going to be utilized for energy has to be turned into this thing called NAD. NAD is essentially the gasoline that your cells could use combined with oxygen to make energy. So right out of the gate, if you wanted to make an impact on NAD, do you think it might make a difference of what quality and what quantity of raw material you're putting in your body to extract that NAD from? Of course. Right away, the power and the strength of your digestive system to break those foods down so that you can refine those products and extract an amount of NAD from that food is also critically important. NAD is one of those ingredients that we know measurably decreases with age. But is it really the time you spend on the planet that's reducing your NAD levels? Is it your food choices that might be reducing your NAD levels? Is it the strength and resilience of your digestive system that might be reducing your NAD levels? Or in some cases, and probably in most cases, all of the above. So oftentimes we hear an ingredient and we immediately just try to get the ingredient. And while that may have some really great short-term benefit, if there's a reason why NAD levels are dropping and we ignore that, then that strategy might just be a temporary band-aid on a bullet wound. Not to discount the impact or the effect that NAD precursors may have or NAD injections or NAD IVs may have. I'm a huge fan. I utilize some of those myself. We utilize them in patient care all of the time. I'm just mentioning the fact that we always want to look upstream to see if certain systems aren't functioning well to make sure that we're having the full impact that we can have maximizing somebody's health. Inside the mitochondria, that NAD will then be further processed in order to actually get the energy from those ingredients or from the food that we were eating. So in short, NAD is basically the raw material that is going to be delivered inside the inner membrane of the mitochondria to a location called the electron transport chain, which is the final step in energy production. You can think of the electron transport chain as a factory that takes raw materials in, processes that a little bit further. And then the end result of that, the end product of this electron transport chain is ATP or cellular energy. So if you have a factory that's not getting sufficient raw material, could you imagine that your product is going to suffer as a result? Of course. So if your NAD levels are low and you're utilizing NAD as a strategy for improving cellular energy function, that makes perfect sense. And delivering higher amounts of raw material to the factory should allow more processing, should allow for more energy production. And those are the people who respond incredibly well to NAD supplements or NAD precursors or NAD injections or IVs. Could you also imagine that you're delivering a sufficient amount of NAD as it is? However, there are certain issues that somebody is suffering from or certain performance that somebody wants. And so they increase the raw material delivery but the factory door is closed or 
the factory workers are on strike, or one of the pieces of machinery aren't working. You can deliver all the raw material that you want, but if the rest of that process isn't working well, there's no way you're going to get that end product. Maybe those are some of the people utilizing NAD precursors, injections, and IVs, but not really seeing any impact at all. We've done other videos on the electron transport chain, much more detail there. So if you're interested in learning more about the electron transport chain, we're going to put a link in the description below. You can watch that video after this. But as a quick summary, there are a number of rate limiting steps to energy production. Raw material is definitely one of them. Getting enough NAD is critical, as is having sufficient amounts of CoQ10, as is having sufficient cytochrome C stimulation, which primarily comes from red light, which is why red light therapy seems to be growing in popularity and usage. And then of course, actually the most important rate limiting step to energy production is having sufficient amounts of oxygen. And that's one of the places that hyperbaric oxygen comes in. Hyperbaric oxygen is one of the only ways to upregulate systemic oxygen levels, driving far more oxygen into the mitochondria so that it's available to be the last step, the last electron acceptor in the electron transport chain, allowing for energy production to occur. We'll get right back to that video, but real quick, if you're a practitioner or you're looking to get into hyperbarics and you're wanting to learn more and making sure that you're offering this therapy as effectively and as safely as possible, I want you to know that we offer a series of courses, some of which are online and some of which are in person. At thehbotcourse.com, we'll include a link below. We have several courses available from training and certification in hyperbaric medicine, safety director, as well as a few different business implementation options to get the business up and running. So if you think that training and education would be helpful for you, take a look at thehbotcourse.com. Again, the link will be in the description below. Now back to our video. If you're one of those people that have been trying different NAD products and you just don't seem to think that there's any response there, it may be because one of those other areas are deficient. In so many cases, combining different pieces of that puzzle different strategies in concert with one another is actually the best way to get the energy production that we're really trying to get, get the mitochondrial performance that we're really looking for. If you're relatively well, there's creative ways to utilize a number of different strategies for promoting mitochondrial function. If you're not well, or you're really struggling with some type of illness or chronic disease, doing more detective work, understanding all of those steps that I was describing, testing for different parts of those steps, making sure that you're getting exposure to the right ingredients, but not too much exposure to them, or certainly not being exposed to the ingredients that you didn't need in the first place could do more harm than good. And so really working with somebody who understands this, who can help you create a plan that will be most effective for you is really critical. For those of you that are relatively well and just looking to optimize, I think there's different ways to just stimulate certain parts of these pathways periodically just to make sure we're hitting all the high points, not necessarily every day, every year, but strategically stimulating certain pathways and then backing off so that we're constantly rotating some of these different strategies. Most of us are deficient in appropriate frequencies of light. So having regular exposure to very specific frequencies to help create sufficiency of that amount of light in our body would be critical for mitochondrial function. So periodic or repetitive exposure to red light on a pretty regular basis makes a lot of sense to me as a strategy. I also try to get outside, I try to get enough sunlight, which is where all the frequencies of light actually live and where we were designed to absorb those frequencies of light. But I utilize those technologies when I know that I'm not getting enough exposure to natural light sources. So that particular tool comes in and out of my life based on the amount of natural exposure I would typically get. From a raw material standpoint, NAD is a carrier of electrons. And when it gets into the inner membrane of the mitochondria, it's just delivering electrons. So it's not even NAD that is so critically important in that step. It's a way of carrying energy, electron dense energy, and then donating those electrons into that first step of the factory. Methylene blue is also an electron donor. So utilizing methylene blue could also impact the electron density of the first step or two inside the electron transport chain, maximizing the electron gradient, which helps to move the electron transport chain downstream. If there's a reason where I'm really needing to upregulate energy production, I could use NAD related products and methylene blue simultaneously. If I'm just trying to make sure I'm hitting the high points over the course of a year, I might use methylene blue for a week or two, take a week off. 
use it for two or three weeks, take a month or two off. I might use NAD similarly. For me, as a relatively healthy individual, these are not vitamins. In other words, you need to get vitamin C from an outside source. Your body cannot make it. And you need to get a sufficient amount of vitamin C on a regular basis to make sure that that's an ingredient from your environment required for a lot of functions inside of your body. And you need to purposefully do that on a regular basis. NAD is a natural byproduct of metabolism. You should be making it. But you could also take these different NAD products to boost that side of the equation. But I don't believe that's an everyday, day in, day out for the rest of your life. I think that's strategic and periodic bursts for certain purposes. The same way methylene blue is a great product. It's not a vitamin. I don't believe it's something that should be taken every day, day in, day out for the rest of your life. I think it's a tool that could be used to push and stimulate certain pathways for certain purposes over a certain period of time and then removed again for a different purpose and to give your body a break. If you want to understand a little bit more about methylene blue and the roles that it plays inside of our body, we did an entire video on that and you can click that link. It'll take you right to that video. Check that out. Essentially, the biggest mistake that I see in this entire space is as we learn new strategies and gain access to new tools, all we keep doing is adding them into our routine. And before you know it, we become overwhelmed by the amount of pills, food strategies, and therapies and devices that we need to create time for. And I don't believe that that's the answer. I believe that all of these are amazing and critical tools, and they all need to be strategically in and out of that protocol over certain periods of time, ultimately just depending on whatever your goals happen to be. So please keep that in mind if you're starting to explore NAD and different NAD strategies that it could be terrific for you. It might be a huge part of your story and it's likely that it should be cycled in and out of your life. And if you've tried them and they haven't worked for you, please look at some of those other steps along the way because that might be where your answer lies. And then combining the NAD strategy with whatever other ingredient you might be missing will be the answer that you needed. If you're new to this channel, we've done a number of videos on different strategies for maximizing cellular energy, maximizing mitochondrial function, and the role that hyperbaric plays in all of that. So please stay a while, check out a few of the other videos, because I'm sure that'll answer a number of your other questions. I appreciate your attention, and I'll see you next week.